Hello, this is Tim Sedlak here with another demonstration about Microfocus's Active Directory Bridge 2.0. This time I'd like to demonstrate the basics of policy with security and configuration. So what we're going to do is show you some of the basics of configuration control once you actively join Active Directory. What this does, it allows us to create policies that follow the OU structure. Now, those familiar with Active Directory and Group Policy know that policy flows down the tree, and we'll give you a good demonstration of that. I'm going to show you some examples of managing those remote resources through GPOs. We'll create a master GPO. I'll show you some specific cloud-based policies on my cloud Linux servers, and then I'll show you a specific cloud provider, in this case, Amazon Web Services, where I need to have tighter control of a firewall. So let's see what ex exactly what that looks like. So here I am within the group policy management uh, console, and you see I can create a very simple GPO. I'll create a uh, master Linux policy here. Master Linux config policy GPO. There we go. And what this will do, following my structure in Active Directory, it'll allow me to apply this to all the machines in my OU. So I'll go in and actually edit this and make some settings in the firewall here. You see I could set this up for some common allow or deny of certain um, rules, or I can even create a custom rule to allow or block certain ports and determine if they're inbound or outbound, even limit them by IP address. Uh, you'll see I also can set up services such that uh, I can restart services or always make sure HTTPD is running or stopped, uh, or I can even restart it um, should the need, uh, should it be necessary to restart that service. Um, so that's control of the services. I also uh, have some configuration files here with SSH, and you'll see um, some of the common settings for SSH, and I have a way to control privileged access through sudoers. Um, you'll also see that I can add a custom configuration file here if I need to uh, configure a portion of Linux, an application of Linux. Um, we'll dive into this a little bit further in another demo, uh, but I wanted you to be aware this is here. We also have the capability to deploy files out to a machine, and this takes the, by means of uh, defining where the file is, I can uh, use the picker to locate my file. Um, we'll come back and do this later. I determine where it's going to land and what the file permissions are um, in order to deploy that file. Again, we'll come back and review this later. Um, I also have the ability to limit what people can do through the use of this execute commands. Um, here I can set up particular controls. Um, I can do things as simple as a yum install to get particular packages on my version of Linux or my install of Linux. I can even do updates of packages. I can do something as simple as repeat the host name and pipe that out to a file, for instance. Uh, really, it's limitless here, and you can determine, notice that there's a run once checkbox there. Now, to dive in a little bit further, you also have a little bit of control over your logins. And we've broken this out into two different types of logins, one for on-premise and one for cloud. Uh, On-premise is pretty self-explanatory. You'll be able to control, uh, to allow or prevent access by user or group. Uh, and this takes a slightly different look under cloud, um, but feels very similar. You can allow particular AD groups to log in, or you can be specific by matching a, a user through an LDAP filter. So, 
these are some of the core settings I have around my group policy management editor. And there we have some of the core settings you have available through Active Directory Bridge. Let's dive in a little further and really make use of some of the facilities I see. So here I am in Active Directory Users and Computers. I've got my OU structure. I've built out both uh, cloud-based Linux servers where I have AWS, Azure, and Google, and my on-premise Linux servers. So with that, uh, going through group policy and looking at the same structure here, I've got a very basic SSH firewall rule. Let's take a look at what that looks like. I'll open it up in the group policy management editor and open up the firewall rules here. And what you'll see is I've turned allow SSH on on all my Linux servers. Now this allows me access to those, but I could just as easily turn those off if they shouldn't be accessed through SSH. Um, I can also choose uh, whether inbound or outbound is allowed. Now there are some cases where I might want something specific for, for instance, on a multi-location firewall. Here I can go through and turn off HTTP and FTP. Um, I'll want to do that on all of my cloud and internal based Linux servers. So let's see what that looks like and how the agent handles that and applies that policy. We see here in AWS, uh, the policy to deny HTTP and FTP and the same, another policy that allows SSH is applied here. Here's my on-premise box and you'll see it looks exactly the same. Deny HTTP, uh, deny FTP and allow uh, SSH. Same sort of thing from a Google perspective. Let me scroll down and show you the exact same agent um, is reporting the same thing. And here we are in Azure and you see the deny and the allow. So with one simple policy, well, in my case, two simple policies, one to allow SSH and one to deny HTTP and FTP, um, it gets applied the same, translated appropriately for the flavor of Linux, and then delivered to the cloud-based resources for the policy agent uh, to enforce that particular policy. So there we have it, uh, some very simple policy-based controls. And if you're interested in learning more, here's the URL where you can find out more about AD Bridge. Thank you.